Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Good evening, everybody. It's Big Mike. I am in the car in the parking garage of the good old AMC Del Amo 18 here in Torrance, California. This movie theater is roughly about 10, 15 minutes away from the one in Rolling Hills, and they don't always get the same inventory. Although this theater has two screens less than Rolling Hills, they still, like I said, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So let's talk about a movie. I went today Monday, February 13th, 2023, to go see that awful film, She Came From the Woods, earlier this afternoon. I thought it could have been better. Like I said, some of the practical effects were decent enough, but overall, eh. So, much like that movie, this one, Consecration, which I'm just now talking about, which I also just now got out of, again, never heard of it. Never saw a trailer, never saw a poster, no, nothing. And to me, that's the best way to see a movie because we live in an era now where privacy and details are absolutely everywhere. You know, it's rare to do like you would do back in the 90s and even 20 years ago in the early 2000s where you'd walk by the lobby and see a poster and a release date and spark your interest. So about the only way that happens anymore is logging into your AMC app and seeing what's now showing. And apart from, you know, She Came From The Woods, this other one, Consecration, was in a similar vein. Like I'm just now saying again, it was rated R, it was exactly 90 minutes long, and its genre was horror. I could tell by the poster, so I'm like, I'm in. And the film is rather simple. It tells the story of a young woman, played by Jenna Malone, who a lot of us probably know from the film Sucker Punch, who, living in England, has to go to Scotland in this convent because her brother was murdered. Now, whilst her brother was murdered, she consults with Scotland Yard as well as with Mother Superior, as well as the local priest there, played by Danny Houston. And while she's trying to un... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry uncover her brother's murder was he actually murdered was it something else was religion at play who knows and it's up to jenna malone to find out while also confronting her past because she has an issue with the church as well as uh believing in certain things so there's kind of those elements going for it and this does kind of fit into the realm of religious horror if you will but of course not in the same vein as the 1971 film The Devils from Ken Russell or anything. The film does have some decent stuff to it. I will say it is a pretty predictable film. It's gory in some parts, but it's nothing's too shocking. There is some elements involving child abuse, and there are some flashbacks that are very disturbing. I'm not going to deny that. And one thing I will commend the film for is it has a solid opening and a solid ending. While it is pretty predictable and there's a lot of flashbacks and callbacks to what happened earlier and they all kind of gel, I like the opening shot and the ending shot of the movie. It's very cohesive and the ending narration puts a nice bow on top. And I will confess, I was rather surprised by Jenna Malone's performance because she is an American actress and she put on a pretty good English accent if you ask me. It was almost convincing to me to the point where I thought she was British and trying to imitate an American accent. But uh, I'm sure British people would tell me I'm way off and say that she did a terrible job. But no matter, I found the film to be entertaining at most, but a little bit of a slog. Because even at 90 minutes, there is so much detail and so much story condensed into the runtime. And you're in the same environment for the whole runtime, a convent, that it does become a bit tired, and because there are so many predictable things, it can feel a bit tropey, and because 
there's a lot of things that involve something you saw earlier and now they're referencing it again because the film kind of goes backwards and forwards through her journey. I'm talking about Jenna Malone's character. It can, again, feel a bit too repetitive. But like I said, for what it's worth, when all is said and done, when all the pieces fit together within the last 10 minutes of the movie and the final shot, it's a solid enough viewing. And I will confess, when I saw that it was produced by Shudder, you know, that app that has all the horror movies, by the way, you guys, join it. It's well worth the money. It is still $40 for a whole year, and it's ad-free, so that's a big plus. And they got some good gems on there. I just wish they'd bring back the feature where it would let you know what's leaving soon before they get rid of it so you have a chance to watch it, rather than the whole here today, gone tomorrow sort of thing. But no matter. The film was produced by Shudder. It was also produced by IFC. That had me worried in the opening credits because, again, I'd never heard of this movie and I didn't know who the production company was. And it was produced, I'm sorry, it was directed by Christopher Smith, who also produced it. I've never heard of him either. So, again, stuff I was really worried about until I saw the credits because, like I said, I only, I only knew Jenna Malone and Danny Houston. But back to what I was saying with the production company, I was worried about IFC and Shudder producing it because they also distributed the rights to Skinamarink, which I saw a few weeks ago. And I was very off put by that movie because of how bad it is. And again, I'm still shocked that that movie has such high praise from the critics. I just, to, to me that, I'm not gonna go there. Anyway, um, for what it's worth, if you can find Consecration in theaters, go ahead and give it a check out. If not, you'll be fine if you don't miss it. I mean, if you do miss it, the cinematography I forgot to mention is pretty good. This film had two directors of photography, and although it wasn't shot in anamorphic, the choices of lenses and the lighting and the framing was very strong. My final critique I will give to the film is the CGI. There's a moment early in the film where people are falling, and it looks pretty poor, and there's even like a floating cross sword looking thing that also looks kind of hokey and you know you, you got to forgive it for what it is but I'm just saying like you know especially showing shots of people falling if it's done with a hybrid of CGI and blue screen and the speed and the motion blur don't match it's gonna look pretty phony and it did there really was no moment in the film that really shocked me or made me think "Ooh, you know there's there's no nothing like that at all but regardless, I know I sound like I'm trashing the film. It's got, at the end of the day, overall, it's got some solid performances. It has a good beginning and ending. It all feels cohesive by the end. And I think it's worth a watch or a rent at the very least. And with that being said, I will now give my grade for Consecration. I'm going to go ahead and give this a solid, well-rounded C. I'm not going to give it a plus or a minus, but a C. It's exactly right in the middle. It is an average enough film. It's good enough for what it delivers, but don't expect anything too great. Well, anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching my review today of Consecration. It is in theaters right now. Go ahead and go check it out. You might have just until Wednesday or Thursday because it's probably a one-week release, much like She Came From The Woods. And be sure to check back this Thursday evening when I will be reviewing the brand new Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I have tickets to see it in IMAX 3D back here again Thursday at 3 p.m. And when you factor in the previews and the post credit scenes, my review won't be ready for you guys until around 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So look forward to it because I know I'm looking forward to that as well. And thank you guys for everything that you do following me thus far. I really appreciate it. And please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check back every week. I see at least three movies, three brand new movies every week. So you got plenty of that to look forward to, as well as movie reactions and some food test testing. So look forward to that. You guys take care, be well, and I'll see you at the movies. See you later, guys.